government's policy on poker machine reform ignores one of the key recommendations made by the Productivity Commission, and that is $1 maximum bets. The Prime Minister says introducing such a measure would cost $1.5 billion. But the Greens dispute this figure and they plan to introduce $1 bet legislation when Parliament resumes. Senator Richard Di Natale is the Greens' spokesperson for gambling and he joins us now. Welcome back to The Drum. G'day. What makes you think the government's figures are wrong? Oh, look, all of the independent costings have said that the absolute maximum that this policy could cost is $350 million. In fact, all of the economic evaluation that's been done by people like the, at the Australia Institute, a number of academic institutions, suggests it's more like $200 million. Now, for the government to claim a cost of $1.5 billion, um, that is a wildly differing estimate I think it's looking for cover because it hasn't been prepared to introduce the most effective and straightforward way to deal with the problem. And I think they need to justify their costings. They need to be very clear with the Australian people about the advice that they've received uh, because my concern is that this is um, more cover for a government that lacks the courage to take on uh, a cashed-up lobby group in Clubs Australia. So how do you know the government's figures are wrong if they haven't released that advice as you're calling them to? Because all of the independent evaluation on the $1 bet policy points to a maximum cost of $350 million. The only uh, two groups that are claiming costs of that dimension are Clubs Australia and the government. So my concern is that the government's essentially using cost as a bit of a smokescreen. Uh, if the government is uh, being genuine, they'll uh, release that advice. I mean, the Prime Minister has said that she wants a debate based on facts and evidence, and that's why she's conducting this trial. Well, if she wants that debate, that's all very well and good. But she needs to begin that process by putting forward where she's got those costs, who have provi who's provided that advice, and the details of that advice, because that is a wildly different estimate to all of the independent uh, research that's been done on this, on this proposal. Are the Greens likely to support Julia Gillard's proposals when they come before Parliament? Look, our bottom line is that we want to see uh, action on problem gambling. Now, this won't deliver that. In fact, this defers any action to a future Parliament. It's a decision that is devoid of any conviction whatsoever. I mean, the government has tried to walk both sides of the fence. They've tried to give the impression of being committed, and yet when it's come to the crunch, they haven't been prepared to test that commitment within the parliament. They, uh, they need to put forward a proposal that requires action, that, that involves genuine action on poker machines. If they do that, we'll support it. Um, we know that the uh, But will public... you support what they've announced? in the last what, 24 hours? What we'll try and do is improve it. So we're going to improve it by introducing $1 bet uh, limits. We're going to look at all aspects of that legislation and we'll do whatever we can to improve it. In the end, we're not going to block any reform that is a step forward, but this is a small baby step in an area where a significant action was needed. And we've got a unique opportunity with this current parliament to take that action and the government, and I have to say the opposition here, neither of them have shown an appetite ref for reform when the majority of the Australian community want action. They're desperate for something to be done about this problem. There are kids going hungry at night because people are addicted to, the, to, um, uh, to pokies. We've got families whose uh, houses have been lost, whose jobs have been lost, all because the government has used both the smokescreen of the numbers in the parliament and the cost of reform to defer action. Remembering that if we don't act by 2017, which is what we're saying should be done with the dollar bets proposal, $30 billion of revenue is going to be lost by problem gamblers. Okay. That's the sort of dimension of the problem we're talking what about. What about the idea of a trial? What's wrong with trialling mandatory pre-commitment to see whether it works or not? Well, we know it works. The evidence from Norway uh, has demonstrated that it works. The Productivity Commission have said you could introduce dollar bets without a trial. There's no need for that. The Greens they said that, they said that about $1 bets. The, the Productivity Commission didn't talk about a trial on $1 bets, but they did talk about a trial for, for mandatory pre-commitment. They spoke about a trial to iron out some of the technical issues around the card technology. The trial was never meant to assess the effectiveness of mandatory pre-commitment 
as a policy proposal. We know that works. We know from the international evidence that uh, mandatory pre-commitment technology works. There's no need for a trial to evaluate the effectiveness of the policy proposal. It was purely to look at technical glitches that needed to be ironed okay. out. Annabelle? But, but Richard, it's Annabelle Crabb here. I just wanted to ask you if you could clear up for us. What is it in, a po in an outcome sense that, that dollar bets could achieve that mandatory pre-commitment wouldn't? Well, we know that most people who have a problem with the way they play the pokies bet a dollar or more. And we know that by putting in dollar bet limits, the first thing you do is you don't affect 90% uh, of recreational gamblers who, who bet a dollar or less per spin anyway. So the vast majority of the community won't notice a change. Uh, this will hit hardest with problem gamblers, uh, and it means that we'll get an immediate impact. It's also cheaper to implement than mandatory pre-commitment, no need for uh, the technology. It's very popular, and it has the support within the parliament. I mean, the government has suggested that there's not an appetite within the parliament. Well, I've spoken to members of the coalition, I've spoken to members of the crossbench, and let me tell you, there is uh, significant support for the Greens $1 bet proposal inside the parliament. It's only the government and the opposition, uh, both of whom lack the courage to take this <laughs> proposal to the parliament. Well, look, um, Andrew Wilkie, it seems, in that original meeting with, with Julia Gillard, actually suggested dollar bets first. Um, and what is it about the government, do you think, that drove them towards the mandatory pre-commitment model instead? Oh, look, I, I think the um, Clubs Australia would prefer mandatory pre-commitment ahead of, the dollar, of dollar bets, I think, for various reasons. One is mandatory pre-commitment's a policy proposal that's much easier to uh, confuse people about. Uh, people don't like the idea of having to sign up uh, using card technology before they play the pokies. I think that's... Uh, in terms of the ability to be able to prosecute their licence to punt campaign, mandatory pre-commitment gives them that opportunity. And I think uh, in terms of the government, um, the government's petrified of Clubs Australia. I mean, they caved into a cashed up uh, campaign from uh, mining interests and they've done the same here on the issue of poker machines. So uh, my view is the government's never had uh, their heart in this. Uh, if they did, they could immediately implement the cheapest, simplest and most effective reform option, which is the dollar bet option. You're right, it was Andrew Wilkie's preferred option. It's Senator Xenophon's preferred policy response as well. And the Greens have been advocating uh, from the get-go that this is the best way to deal with the problem. OK, we'll have to leave it there. Richard Di Natale, thanks for talking to us on the drum. Pleasure. And we should point out we put calls into Jenny Macklin, but she was unavailable, as was our representatives from Clubs Australia. So what do voters think about Julia Gillard's decision?